Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining us today and welcome to our virtual event for MA Illustration. Today you'll have the opportunity to hear more about the course and what to expect. You'll also hear more about UAL and Camberwell College of Arts. Um, I'll start with introducing myself. Hello, my name is Griselda and I'm a member of the student recruitment and marketing team here at Camberwell College of Arts. Just to get started, I'm going to go through what this event means to you or well, what how this event will be for you. Your microphones are muted during your present our presentation and your webcams are not visible. There will be an opportunity to ask questions at the end, so please do type your questions into the question chat box that you should be able to see at the bottom of your screen. You will also receive a recording of this event via email post event. Okay, so Camboy College of Arts. Camboy College of Arts is one of six colleges which makes up UAL. Six colleges, one university. This year, again, UAL was voted number two in the world for art and design in the QS World University Subject Rankings. Campbell College of Arts is a unique place to study. This year, it turned 125 years old, and it's been around as an art school, art and design school since then. Campbell's ethos is rethinking current practices and cultivating the new. Here at Campbell, we embrace both traditional craftsmanship and digital technology. Students are encouraged to find their path and students have the freedom to explore their individuality. Campbell College of Arts is located in South East London, which is at the heart of a real creative community. It's right next to Peckham. There are galleries, project spaces and studios in the local area. And there's a thriving local art scene. It's so Campbell and Peckham is a big scene. There's plenty of places to eat, drink and socialise locally, including lots of small businesses. And um, there's lots of halls of residence in the local area to Camberwell. There's actually four in walking distance. One of those is the one pictured here, which is called Gardens House. So if you are interested in accommodation or if you're beginning to think about accommodation, I would recommend checking out UAL's accommodation page. We can see full listings of their halls of residence available. Um, and they also have virtual tours, so you can see everything in a little bit more detail there. Um, Campbell provides good transport links to central London. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about being a postgrad student in particular now. So we have the postgraduate community here at UAL. It provides access to cross-college and cross-disciplinary opportunities, events and networking for postgraduate taught and research students here at UAL. The initiative aims to build a diverse programme of cross-disciplinary events, reading groups, visits and opportunities these are designed exclusively for our postgraduate student body. So the postgrad community also organises quite a wide range of events. So this programme includes um, events such as curator-led tours of major exhibitions, visits to artist studios and industry spaces, research activity at UAL, student-led skill and knowledge exchanges, and importantly, the opportunity to network. UAL offers a range of services available for students. We have student services, which offer disability and dyslexia advisors. We also have counsellors. We have health advisors, which specialise in mental health and wellbeing. We also have a chaplaincy service. The Arts SU is UAL's student union. You can see their website for full listings of all the societies that we have here at UAL. We also have a, have a wide range of sports clubs, so there really is something for everyone at the Arts SU. We also have Art Temps, which is a temping agency which is connected to UAL, and this allows students and recent graduates to work flexibly at UAL. Um, you're hired through Art Temps, and the work is pretty flexible, so you can just sign up if you're interested. Um, again, they have a whole website um, which you can find on our webpage. Entry requirements. So for MA illustration, you need a BA degree or equivalent academic qualification. You need evidence of ability in your chosen subject area. Alternative qualifications or experience will be taken into consideration. So do take a closer look at the course page where you can see a real detailed, um, detailed points about the requirements for MA illustration. It's really broken down. Um, you will need to have a personal statement and a portfolio of work. 
English language, if English is not your first language, you will need to provide evidence in enrolment of an English language qualification. For this course, MA Illustration, you will need an IELTS level 6.5 or above, with at least 5.5 in reading, writing, listening and speaking. Please check our English language requirements. Again, you will find this on the course page. <clears throat> That's the same thing. So you'll find more information about English language and what you need and the requirements on the MA Illustration course page. OK, so fees. Um, it's important to say that these fees here that are listed are correct for the 2024-2025 entry. So they are subject to change um, for the following year. You can pay your fees in an instalment plan. Um, again, you can find out more about this and it shows how that breaks down on our website. Postgraduate funding. So there's a number of funding and um, discount opportunities. Um, please do take a look at our website again, but I'll go through a few of them here. So you can have, um, well, there is something called the UAL progression discount. So UAL graduates are entitled 20, to a 20% discount. Again, eligibility applies. So um, if you have studied a BA, so a degree, undergraduate degree, you may be eligible to have a 20% discount when applying for an MA. We also have the UAL Home Postgraduate Scholarship. So who, home students can apply for a scholarship of a £7,000 fee waiver. There's two application deadlines for this scholarship, and they kind of fall into the um, deadlines for the course, the application deadlines, which I'll get to in just a moment. So they tie together. So we also have, for international students, we have a postgraduate scholarship, and there's up to 215 of these, £7,000 fee waivers. Again, you need to check if you're eligible for this. We also have a UAL International Postgraduate Scholarship and Accommodation Award. So there's up to four £50,000 scholarships to cover tuition fees, accommodation at one of UAL's halls of residence. And it may also contribute towards your living costs. Again, you need to check if you're eligible. Also a postgraduate master's loan. You can find out more about these on gov.com. Um, which also has a fees and funding calculator. So you can use this fees and funding calculator to estimate how much your studies may cost you and what funding may be available to you. How to apply. You need to apply online and everything happens through the UAL portal. So you need to um, create your login details for this UAL portal. You make a direct application online via the course page of the website. And like I said, you will then receive your login details for your UAL portal. You will need to have a personal statement, which is approximately 500 words. This needs to include your reasons for choosing the course, your current creative practice, and how this course will help with your future plans. If you do not have any formal qualifications or academic qualifications, you need to describe your relevant education and experience. We will then do an initial application check we review your application, and if you meet these standard entry requirements for the course, you should be then invited to submit a mini portfolio. So the mini portfolio, guidance on what to include is available on MA Illustration course webpage. I'd say approximately 10 to 30 images. Um, again, please refer to the specific course guidance for the criteria. Following the review, we select applicants to move on to the next stage of the process. The next stage is an interview. These are likely to take place online. And if you'll be selected for interview, you will be invited to then book on to either a Skype, um, on a Skype online interview, possibly a telephone interview, but more likely to be a Skype interview. Again, you will receive all of these notifications through the UAL portal. You will be requested to pre prepare a portfolio and then the outcome of the interview will be communicated to you through your UAL portal. There's two deadlines. One of them is coming up very soon, so this Wednesday, Wednesday the 13th of December. And then the second round of the application deadline is Wednesday the 3rd of April. So there's two. You can apply to either. Um, it's all fair. There's none bias. So um, please do feel free to ask any questions about this later. We'll get to a Q&A shortly. Um, I can see that a few of you have joined a little late. That's totally fine. If you missed my introduction, 
um, you will receive a recording of this event. Um, and we will also be doing a Q&A at the end. So if you'd like to put any of your questions in the little chat box, we can get to that at the end. I'm now going to introduce the rest of the panel that we have here today. So we have Sinead, who is the MA Illustration course leader. If you'd just like to say, oh, I just need to move her into the right area. One second. Um, so yes, we have Sinead, who is the MA course leader, and we have Kaywee, who is a recent graduate. If you'd just like to say hello, Kaywee. Hello, everyone. I'm Kaywee. Nice to meet you guys. Brilliant, thank you. And then we have Sinead, who is the MA course leader for illustration. If you'd just like to say hello, Sinead, and then you can share your screen. Hey, hi everyone. Um, I'm Sinead, I'm the course leader for MA illustration here at Camberwell. Do you want me to go straight into the presentation? Yeah, that'd be Sorry, great. I'm struggling a little here um, to hear you. Let me know if the sound is okay in here. Yep. We've got quite a few things going on in the building. Um, okay. Great, thank you. Great. Okay. Um, I will talk through um, uh, a bit of an overview and an outline of the course, um, the kind of main uh, approaches that we have to teaching that kind of make up the course content. Um, I'll share the projects that we do. Um, and if there's time, I'll give you a bit of an overview of um, the kind of structures that sit within our course. So uh, things to do with contact time and learning activities as well. Um, so just to start off with some uh, of the kind of main philosophies that underpin um, our approach to um, illustration. Illustration is a, you know, is a really exciting discipline to be in, to be in teaching in, to be working in, to be practicing in. Um, and there's a lot of new um, spaces um, in a very kind of changing, um, in a kind of changing world. So uh, for us, um, we uh, we support our students um, in working uh, working methods. So we're looking at kind of new, innovative working methods and ideas and concepts that can really push away from those traditional notions of how and where illustration operates in the world. Um, there's so much potential and there's so many places for illustration to work. Um, and we're really invested in um, supporting our students to moving their practice to those spaces. Uh, we approach illustration practice um, as transdisciplinary um, and it's an approach to making work that is actively informed by, immersed in, submerged into and lodged within another discipline. Um, and that's how we approach illustration and understand illustration practice on the course. And we support our students um, with thinking about their illustration practice as a, as a constellation of making, of interests, of experiences, um, approaches, ideas and thinking. And it's about the relationships and the connections between these things um, that we really focus on here um, with the course. And we understand illustration as a relational discipline. So illustration um, in conversation and dialogue and um, always with another topic, a subject, something that is in the world um, already that has audiences, that has meaning, that has a kind of cultural life. Um, and illustration is about, um, you know, uh, either sitting on the surface, having roots, having relationships um, with that topic, with that discipline. So here are some illustrations of illustration. Um, and this is the shape of the course. So it's a 15 month course um, and we work in three blocks which go from um, autumn, from the beginning of one autumn term to the following uh, end of the autumn term. Um, each of our units is um, 15 weeks long and each one is uh, 60 credits. So they're big lengthy uh, units that have time for uh, project building and development and to kind of support students with moving to that kind of level seven MA um, level study. And so across these three units, um, we have five course projects. Um, so I'll just give you a bit of an idea of those five course projects that kind of uh, that span those units. The first three projects um, start in unit one and they're a lot shorter, they're a lot sharper and um, they're about introductions, they're about uh, momentum. The first project, Locate, 
uh, is about locating a subject of interest through gathering uh, research using um, illustration practice. The second one is identifying an inquiry through developing and applying knowledge from another discipline. And the third one is about positioning um, work by considering a role as an investigator, author, educator or activist. Um, and then unit two, we start the major project um, and uh, the reader project. So project four is a reader is a collection of references that map out a subject area. You will work collectively to produce a reader on a shared area of interest. And this is the kind of um, this is the kind of uh, uh, the unit that replace the project that replaces um, that kind of main research project. This is about students working instead of individually coming together and working collectively um, to uh, pool knowledge, to share knowledge, um, and to build a, a resource that can be used by other students on a particular topic or subject um, that unites their major projects. So coming together and meeting in this place of, of research. Um, and so alongside that, students will work individually on their major projects. Um, and we see the major projects as an opportunity to expand um, illustration practice by building an individual project using research methods and subject interests established throughout the course. So the major project runs through uh, unit two and unit three. Um, and there are lots of different stages where we support students with um, looking inwards, looking outwards, uh, developing um, in order to kind of develop a um, a body of work that exists within a context in the world and then an opportunity to make that work public. And so we do this through um, a lot of different parts of the curriculum. Um, we have a the first kind of um, big kind of suite of uh, workshops that we do with students is called uh, Methods in Practice. And this is um, revolves around a series of site visits in the first unit that really support uh, students um, getting an experience using their practice um, as a method for discovery, for inquiry. Um, and this is, you know, takes many, many forms and exists as a kind of collection of work. And it's, um, it's a really great opportunity for students to situate themselves in London as we move out into the city um, to do these workshops. And it's also an opportunity to um, bring existing uh, materials, approaches, ways of working and start to develop them and put them into a kind of new, this sort of new application um, and uh, travel a little bit with that. Alongside these workshops um, exists the uh, technical pathways. This is where we um, put students into one of three pathways. So students sign up and it's a suite of 10 workshops um, that are run by uh, technicians and academics. Um, one of them is called Reproductions and it's around um, multiples, editions, working with printmaking processes, um, risograph printing processes and letterpress processes um, and reproductions is all about kind of exploring and taking project work through um, these um, either new or established material processes. Uh, the second one is transformations and this is working with 3D and 2D processes such as ceramics, photography and animation to kind of set up a, um, a a relationship of processes that moves between object and image um, and plays with kind of staticness and um, moving, um, moving images. And the third one is called Evolutions and this is um, all revolves around uh, digital spaces and virtual spaces. Um, and the team take students through um, a variety of different processes um, that sort of start to build up to um, creating environments and uh, objects and everything that exists virtually, uh, which is really exciting. We've just had a, an exhibition with the students last week who showed all the work they've been working on this term. And it's um, there's some really exciting, really innovative uh, things happening with all of those material processes, those technologies um, that are happening. Um, so, Alongside the methods in practice, students are also pushing themselves and getting their, um, deepening their relationship with material and technical processes. Um, alongside this, we have um, a series of talks that focus around um, kind of getting under the skin of illustration practice. And this is given by um, a really large selection of staff members who work across the illustration program. So the undergraduate course, the graduate diploma course, and the MA course. And um, 
this series of talks is about unpacking kind of key words, key terms in illustration um, by sharing examples of projects. So this is a, um, a really great opportunity to get to know uh, the kind of breadth and diversity of um, staff practice um, and also a way to kind of start to orientate yourself within the program and the ideas within the program, but also feed some of that back into reflecting on, um, on uh, your own practice. Um, so it's, it's a really important kind of spine that runs through uh, unit one. As, we, as the students move into unit two, um, staff, uh, are staff who work on the reader project Take a um, take a set of themes that are emerging in students' uh, major projects and um, lead and kind of curate a series of seminars, which involves some research trips, some working with particular kind of collections or sites, um, and support students with um, making um, this online uh, publication at the end that showcases a kind of uh, edited and curated selection of research resources. So these come from practice, they come from experiences on the visits, um, engagement with key texts um, so it's a really um, it's a really lovely place for sharing resources and kind of surfacing you know really important um, resources that have um, come up through both the major project work but also through those kind of collective um, experiences in the seminars we also have a series of major project workshops and this is um, you know where the students come together everybody's off individually working on their major projects and um, so students come together and start to explore themes such as display, displaying work, um, curating work, um, editing work um, and discussing and moving things forward so they can be sort of around problem solving, they can be around sharing um, and they can also be around display and after this, the uh, students do a, um, a show. We have a show in July um, where students um, share this kind of really uh, rich body of work that has come up through the major project. And then the second part of the um, major project after the summer break, students come back in that final autumn term to work on a series of public events. Um, so we've just had, we just finished um, our public events for uh, with, with this outgoing year two. And this year, um, students broke into smaller groups and we supported them with um, a series of um, workshops and tutorials um, that ended in a, in a really particular event relating to a, a kind of professional landscape or professional context for working uh, that the students had ambitions um, to work within beyond graduation. So we had uh, a self-publishing group, and this is an image from the self-publishing group who went to the Small Publishers Fair. They had this experience um, working together as a small team and putting their publications together and selling them um, to uh, the people at the fair, which is really successful. Um, we had a, uh, this is some photos from an exhibition by a group of students who have ideas to work in a residency context. So they had been on site in Peckham um, in a building called the Safe House and they'd each made a kind of body of work um, and in response to the site and then came together in this exhibition, which was really exciting. Um, and uh, they have the, they sort of curated and um, put this series of work together um, in, a, in a really lovely show. Um, oh, that's the end of my images for that. We also had a, a commercial publishing um, fair where students made pictures and dummy books. Another group of students um, made a shop and did a um, work around commerce. And we had uh, another group doing education where we put on an open school of workshops for um, BA students and MA students. And then the academic research group did a, a really exciting symposium where they all shared kind of their research presentations. So, um, yeah, we're sort of looking to uh, support students in, in response to the potential of where they want to go, support them with the experiences that help them to uh, move that a little bit further and take that kind of uh, step beyond uh, the institution, uh, working within the university and get out into um, a public space. Check the time. I'm doing all right. Okay, so our learning activities or the main learning activities on the course are project briefings, project workshops, the technical pathway workshops, tutorials, peer reviews, seminars, audio visual presentations, uh, visiting practitioner talks, and our um, what is illustration talks. 
Um, we support students with tutor groups uh, in unit one, and then we move into uh, sign-up tutorials and peer reviews and assessment presentations. Um, I'm gonna skip the slide because I can see that um, Griselda's already talked through the kind of application deadlines and, and how to apply, but this is a reminder of the dates if you, if you missed those. I just wanted to end with um, a couple of slides just to kind of outline um, um, if, uh, if you decide to make an application, uh, we look through portfolios. We have a really large volume of portfolios that we look through. And uh, the things that we're kind of looking to do is to put a cohort together of students um, who um, can show us things through their project work, their process work, their thinking, their um, research um, from whatever discipline or background. Um, our students are interested and engaged with the world. Our students really embrace ambiguity. Um, and finally, and probably the most important, is that our students really want to challenge themselves and their practice. And uh, that's, that's me finished. I can also hear that someone is drilling outside. Uh, so maybe this is a good time to uh, end. Brilliant. Thank you so much, uh, Sinead. That was great. Um, I'm now going to share the screen, my screen, and I will hand over to a recent graduate from MA Illustration. So, okay, we have just given you slide control, so you can move those slides if you want to um, begin presenting. Okay, let me see if I can move it. Oh, okay, cool. Let me try it. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Kai Wei, and I graduated from the University of Arts London, Camberwell College of Arts Illustration MA. And today I'll introduce my experience in the course. So why MA illustration? I think the reason would be, so the illustration in the uh, CCW is quite different from other, like a uh, very traditional illustration. <clears throat> the illustration here is a bit like a push the boundaries of illustration in your mind. It's not traditional, it's not very commercial, but you can do whatever you want and use like a, a lot of materials and mediums and just to experiment the like the narration you want to tell. And uh, the resources are very nice. Like you can use the metal wood, uh, ceramics, text, uh, textiles, uh, fundries, uh, and uh, uh, casting and 3D printing. And all of the studios are open to you. You can use it in the uni and you can use the cross campus resources. And we also have the incorporating emerging technology into the course design. So the photo you can see on the right hand side is that was me. I forgot it's uh, about like a unit two. We were experiment about how to use. Uh, it's a unit four. We experiment use the VR hat side. And then the week in the course would be like a <clears throat> tutorial. I remember the tutorial. The tutorial happened before is like a um, Wednesday, every Wednesday. I remember not every Wednesday, but it will happen that Wednesday. And then we have group tutorials, and uh, peer like a uh, present present your uh, objective project to your peers and seminars, lectures, workshops, and uh, in the independent work in the studio and library. So here is my portfolio. Um, so uh, I I wouldn't share all of the portfolio here because the time is quite limited. But I want to emphasize on the point is the portfolio. The point is I think the narration narratives are should be engaging and uh, the research is very important and um, the artwork itself actually uh, should be emphasized on the research. How you never how you like. Uh, um, put the information behind your project and make them valid, build up them as a valid and very like engaging and also logic um, narration that is very important. So, and the other thing I want to share is in the portfolio, it doesn't have to be like a perfect artworks. All of the project doesn't need to be all perfect. Um, the thing is, as, as long as you have one good 
uh, narration that the course leader or people who reviewing the uh, the portfolio can see your potential. That's enough. And um, this one is my unit one project of my unit one is uh, locate identity and position. So based on the sh uh, on the course content introduction Schneid shared before. So this one is mine. And I was experimenting myself, showing the different part of me. So as you can say, all of them, this unit uh, and this project is, well, I didn't show anything about the drawing. That's why I'm saying the illustration here is not only about the drawing, not only about the traditional things, you can use all of the medias you want. So at the moment, I feel like a uh, uh, photograph, photography might be a good thing for me to experiment myself because that's very like direct, direct way to reflect myself. And then at the unit two, so at this point we have two part. So the the first the top part you can see the picture top part the pink picture was a part of our radar group uh, project. So the radar group is um you have to show the material you have to like um. I would say it's an experiment project of learning, learning the research, like uh, to how to waving the information about a topic around the topic. The topic we had was uh, the technical, the technicals, technicals. I think technicals and illustrations. So we need to like uh, get some information around this topic and put them together and um, sh visualize the uh, information and show it to the to the tutors. So this was what we done. We what we've done. It's a 3D exhibition and we put everything inside. Um, but the problem was uh it lack of, the space lack of like a narration for the raiders. So it was considered a bit like a uh lack of consideration about um readable, I think. So uh, afterwards in my third unit three, in my final project, I uh, iterate the problem and make the whole space. I still use the three D, three uh, D space for my own project. So at the end, I get some like I learned something from the reader. Anyway, uh, the bottom bottom photo was uh was one of my experiment about my final project. So you can see from here, you can see the trajectory from what you experiment about the research and uh, tell you need to start to think about how to do what is the initial idea of your final project. Yeah, and here you can scan on the uh, QR code and it's my, uh, it's a realizations, it's my showcase. Uh, final project. So I show in the tube journey, like because I was living in the place which is very far away from the canvas. So every day I took like forty minutes, uh, journey tube to a tube journey to the university, and uh, on the way I observe how people behave in the in the tube, and um, that is uh, quite like a culture shock for me because I've never been in London before my uni started, before my master. So I would say it's a cultural trans transition tube journey for me. And here you can have the opportunities. Um, so you can work at UAL. Um, for example, you can open the UAL art temps this is a website and you can get some working chance. For example, like uh, you can take part in the work, uh, take part in the online webinars to be an audience, or you can just like what I did here, showing a picture, I was take part, took part in, I took part in the, uh, the podcast, UL podcast recording process. And uh, a lot of things you can experiment. And my friend got her uh, first UX design job in from this website, and they helped her a lot for her future uh, job hunting. And at the end is my uh, is my Instagram. 
So if you are interested in my work, if you are interested in my uh, full vision of my portfolio, you can follow me and talk to me there. And um, 